there, beautiful people. I'm Sheila Bella. And I'm Will Roosh. Welcome to our podcast, Date Night. In this episode, we're doing a Q&A session. I put it out on my Instagram asking whatever questions people have for us. Uh, this past weekend, we were at a jiu-jitsu tournament and mm -hmm. ran into someone who follows my Instagram. True. And they said, oh, we love the, your date night because they met you. She met you. And she's like, <laughs> she's I love your date night podcast and stuff like that. So I was like, so oh, maybe if people are interested, then maybe they have questions for us. So put it out there, whatever questions you have for us. And, uh, and now we're going to answer some. Okay, great. Um, but before we get started, I just want to highlight the review of the week. This review is from Lauren. She says, binge worthy. I absolutely love Sheila and the guests that she brings on. I get a new idea to implement to my life or business with every podcast. Seriously, such a game changer. Absolutely love your Facebook group too. Thank you for everything. Thank you so much for leaving a review. Guys, if you get any value from our content at all, we encourage you guys to leave reviews for Cylinder Radio and for Pretty Rich Podcast because that helps us reach more cool people just like you and get the message out there. So thank you so much for that, Lauren. Also, before we begin, I have a freebie out now. Uh, I've been on social media for about five years and running a podcast for about four years. And in that, I'm trying to bring viewpoint diversity and civil discourse and having dialogue and things like that and get away from the polarization that we see in society. So I'm offering a bunch of tips on how we can have productive conversations on religion and politics, uh, which is very difficult to do. They say you're not supposed to discuss that with friends yeah. and family, but I lay out a bunch of strategies that I've used to heal relationships in my own life. Um, yeah. Also to engage with people that think differently than me. So that's available and it's free on cylinderradio.com slash debate to dialogue. Who is that freebie for, do you think? Like, who do you, who is that for? Like, they're feeling some sort of, sort of way, like... Yeah, so I think it could be for a lot of different people. So it would be for um, teachers. I have a lot of teachers that kind of follow myself. So it would be teachers who are trying to understand how people could think differently than them. We're so polarized with things going on in society right now. So trying to understand... Anyone who wants to understand other perspectives, how mm -hmm. do you engage with that and not let your emotions get the best of you? Mm -hmm. Also, healing relationships. We have friends who mm -hmm. stop talking to like their, their parents, parents or their, yeah. their cousins or their kids or something yeah. like that because they disagree on politics. So if you want to heal those relationships, oh. that worked for me. That happened. I started healing relationships in my own life with like my family. You did. And, um, and it's using these strategies. So if you want to heal those relationships, it's also things that you can just read and just have it in the forefront of your mind when you start to engage with those people. Yeah, that is the case for a lot of people. Um, you know, it's I think healing relationships is like the greatest motivator for this training. And I can personally attest to that, that you have healed a lot of relationships um, with people who see your views as perhaps polarizing or challenging or too much. You are really excellent at this. And so I can't think of anybody better to speak on this topic than you truly. So yeah, go get it. Where can they get it? Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's been a long process. It's cylinderradio.com slash debate to dialogue but it also has helped me to become smarter essentially i don't have mm -hmm. necessarily like a high horsepower brain but i am very curious and i've applied these these strategies to interact with people and i kind of just skip the line because i don't need to be an expert i can just talk to an expert and kind of steal their information steal their knowledge from them and that's how i think i've gotten to a point where i understand a lot of very complex issues in a mm -hmm. very nuanced way. awesome okay so on to our podcast date night Who is this for? This is for uh, it's my audience. It's for entrepreneurs, entrepreneurial women, I think, who are in relationships with men who may not share the same vision as you, may or may not be entrepreneurial, may or may not have the same faith as you. So yeah, give this a listen, you know, because Will and I, we have a we have a long journey um, and we got us here to this, you know, not perfect, but really amazing and blessed place. So yeah. who is this for? Well, I think that something about like us, like my initial thoughts would be like, well, you know, to anyone who's like talking about relationship stuff is like, who are you? You know, who are you to be like an expert in this? We're not experts, but what we are is we're very upfront. So mm, as go. we go through the process, it's the same thing I do in my classroom. It's the same thing I do online is like, I don't know everything. There's a lot that I don't know. I have a lot of ignorance, but my process is what you're along for. You're along yeah. the, for the ride, for the process and seeing the thinking process. So the same thing for us. As we work out these things, it's not that our relationship is necessarily like the ideal or it's better than anyone else. It's not what we're saying, but mm -hmm. our process, we're very open about it. True. And so um, we do things, we do a lot of things right, I think. 
And it's been, again, that's been like a long time coming. You know, we've had to develop that through a lot of um, hardships and things, but um, bringing people in on that process, then they can kind of take that, use it or do the opposite if they don't think it's right. But I think that's, that's a lot of what, what we're doing with these kinds so of. So fair. So fair. Well, it's, it's perfect for me. I say it all the time. As, as many uh, like differences that we have, I, I, I say it all the time. I'm like, well, you can't die. Cause like, I really can't, I haven't seen better, you know, I, I haven't dated better or just like seen better, whether it's celebrity or actual person. Like I just, I just, not for me, you know, so we'll cry. <laughs> it's, okay. That's kind of a soulmate thing. I mean, you and I yeah. are corny in that we believe in soulmates and there is someone out there f that is perfect for you, you know? And like, mm. I feel the same way about you. It's not like an, an objective thing. It's a subjective thing that you and I are a good mix for each other. And there might be someone that is objectively better looking, smarter, richer, whatever than I am or I you know. are. Speak for yourself. <laughs> but they're not the, the missing piece of the puzzle. Yeah, I know. That's why when we were doing our intro, I'm like, we sound so odd together until people get to know us. We, I sound like, like we sound like I was telling Julie, we sound like we're, we're from two different like casting directors. Like you sound like you're from CNN and Fox News, and I sound like I'm from like MTV and Bravo and VH1. <laughs> like yeah, I mean, those two demographics would opposite, never mesh, right? Opposites attract, <laughs> and we are opposites in that way. I mean, part of that is it's interesting. What's opposite of you is interesting. So it yeah. starts that it, you know, scratches that little itch. Um, but also, That's true. you talk about business. I was talking in my economics class today about um, different business structures. And one of them is a partnership. I know you're very kind of against partnerships I am. Uh, when you're forming a business. <laughs> but the way partnerships tend to work, if they're going to work, is a Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak type partnership where you're, you're, your expertise is in different areas. Mm -hmm. Someone who's more conscientious versus, and then someone who's more creative. Yeah. You know, so you and I are kind of in different realms where we're, the way our minds work is very different in a lot of ways. So I think yeah. in that way it works. The garage door just broke and you wouldn't know how to fix that, but I could go no. out there and, no. and rig it together. I wanted nothing to do with it. Yeah. Yeah. So like, questions. But, yeah, but I probably wouldn't be doing a podcast right now. Unless <laughs> Or your social media, the, your yeah. entire social media platform. If it weren't for me, like telling you like, Hey, a lot of people need to hear what you have to say. Good question for you. Is that chapstick? That you have or lipstick? It's both. It's a gloss. It's a hydrating gloss. Listen, my lips are chapped. I was Go you get and some. Go get some. I will. <laughs> I Here, you want some? Here, yeah, you can kiss me. It. It's clear. Is it? No, I guess it's not. Yeah, come on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> give, me, give me some of that. No, you got to rub it on. You can't <laughs> ruin my line. <laughs> I got a full thing to film. Sh sheer. Sheer. No, not even. They're not. They're so tiny. I do that to the boys too. Oh my gosh, that's so horrible. I give them a like sheer a, tint. A pale white boy with red lips is not a good. No, look. it's not red. Whatever, dog. It's a sheer tint. Listen, <laughs> let this be your permission to wear some tinted moisturizer or a sheer lip. I'm not looking for bomb. permission. That's not what's stopping. No, not me. for. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking for anybody else out there. Oh, okay. I'm not talking okay. to you. No, I'm not. I'm. I'm telling you to do it. I'm not even, I don't think you need my permission. I'm. I'm telling. Don't tell him that. What? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I can look at it and see it's red. I'm not. This is all we have. No, it's sheer. You can't even tell. I would tell you if you look weird, dude. I'd be the first to be embarrassed. All right, who is this? Cheers, dog. What are the top three things we mostly fight about? Okay, you write your answer down, and then I will write my answer down. <laughs> I have two. I'm trying to think of a third one. I know. I'm trying to think of a third one, too. Guys, if you want to get booked and busy in your salon or studio, you have to check out my online course, New Clients Consistently. It'll show you how to get booked and busy month after month. Check out the link in the description box. You know, it's fine. We are, I don't know if it'll be good here, but like we, you and I are great at taboo. We are good at taboo. We're great. And we haven't played in a long time, but even when we were like newlyweds, we were crushing. We were killing people who were, being mar who were married for like 20 years. We were I good. Know. I don't know if we still are. I don't know. Let's see. All right. All right number one comments your tone but i think you're gonna say money i'm gonna say i said spending habits okay money spending habits not just okay. money. spending habits okay what's your number two uh this come maybe similar it's supporting your emotions okay well number two was money 
spending. What's number three for you? I said um, time or my patience. Time, you being late, my patience. Oh, that's the answer. That's the right answer. I have the wrong answer. Yeah. Your structure, just like structure and like timing and your... Well, timing, I guess. So <laughs> we fight over you feeling rushed. Stop rushing me. Yeah. We went to I'm a, a play. Julie went to I'm the I'm a play. creative how the, how butterfly. The first couple of scenes. You have to, if it starts at one, you have to say it starts at 1230. I try my best to just change all the clocks. Talk the clock to 15 minutes earlier. Also, in theater, they tell, they give you a 15 minute warning. They give you a five minute warning, a three minute warning, a one minute warning until places. You're late to everything. And that's just, that's. That is not true. Don't okay. say everything. You're automatically wrong. Yeah, that is, that's true. That I don't like absolutes. When it's actually, when it's something for me. You're actually pretty good. If you're, it's you're better. Correct. If it's for you. Yeah. But if it's for me, it's my world. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, Secret garden. It's so my world. Do we agree okay. that the number one thing would be spending habits? Mm, I don't no. think it's money. I think it's. I think it's. Com- uh, maybe. It's my, my, might be comments. I like <laughs> comments. Just comments because you get really stressed out. And then like last night you start assuming and then it's not what you say. It's the tone. And I'm very intuitive when it comes to people. Ask Laura. I'm not a psychic. There's no such thing. I know you better than Laura. I am really intuitive when it comes to people. And so like I can tell when you've been thinking things that are like assuming. So I'm because I'm so intuitive and I'm right. Okay. Yeah. All right. (laughs) Then you're right. You're assuming the worst. You're like, um, I didn't say anything wrong. I'm like, I know you didn't, but I can tell. <laughs> I don't even, I honestly don't even know what you're talking okay, about. Okay, but yes, money. Let's talk about money because that was on both of our lists. I don't think spending. it's money, babe. I think it's spending. I think it's how you, I, I mean, would you agree that, you know, I'm a capitalist. Like, I, I you have an issue. I don't, I don't mean to say it like that, but like. What am with, I? Um, I'm a socialist. You're a socialist. <laughs> Yeah. If we, if you and I had to choose, like between the two of us, I would be the capitalist. If only one of us could be. If only one of us. Oh, could. I'm a. Ca- <laughs> I teach economics. If only one of us could be. You get so stressed out when there's like several, more than one of anything, <laughs> which is everything in this. That's house. not true. That's not true. But we have so many wine glasses. We have so many packs of we, ground beef. Yeah, like I think so many packs of tortillas. Um, yeah, we have like excess. We have a lot of things. And sometimes if I can't like, if there's no room in my closet to like hang my coat, sometimes it gets frustrating because we have Mm. so much You should throw away those seventh grade shirts of yours that you still wear. That's not what the problem is. Okay. It's your six fur coats. You don't have six fur coats. How many fur coats do you have? One. That's not true. One real one. No, how many? Okay. Four (laughs) little, I didn't know How many fake fur coats and real fur coats together? Oh, I have several. (laughs) Six. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, you're right. All right. Um, which is fine. <laughs> Only one should chill have to die for the six coats, which is great. But it still is the issue of like, I don't have room in my closet. We have a nice house. It's a big house and we're out of room. I give it to Maritza. Okay. I give all my great. clothes to Maritza. Or... I need a shed. Huh? I need okay. a shed. Okay, get a shed. Like Go get a shed. All right, maybe I'll get a shed. Fine. Okay, great. Um, Number one thing we find out. Or is it, but however, we this is an area where we had to like learn to get better at and to really understand each other at mm-hmm. um, early in our relationship. And then we continue to learn to be better at this money thing. Um, so yeah, you came over to my side. I appreciate that. That's true. <laughs> one <laughs> of the few things, years. one of the few things, what is at the core of most political disagreements, cutting off family? Um, you have a much more sophisticated answer. So I do not dare go second. I think it's fear and ignorance. Which is like tied together. I think it's ignorance. It's um, not understanding other viewpoints, other lifestyles, um, not being exposed to um, n- not just like different colored skin or different like races or backgrounds, but not being exposed to something a little bit deeper, which is thought diversity. You know, it's like okay, you in your podcast, you interview like black conservatives and um what else? I mean, there's like, I interviewed like <laughs> Luca Eichledine, who's like a transgendered, transgendered. immigrant who yes. rocks a MAGA hat and was there on January 6th. And, like, it's, and it's like, what? Yeah. That exists? Yeah. Like these people exist. I mean, I just did, uh, had a podcast with Meg McLover, who's 
black woman with dreads and a septum piercing and tattoos and she's a lesbian and she is like hardcore conservative, you know? Um, Destiny Hurl and De La Rosa is like new, new wave feminist. She is a, a radical feminist far on the left and she is pro-life. Mm -hmm. You know, these people are, are, are out there. Mm -hmm. uh, you and I differ on our politics. Do we? Yeah, but I think that's, again, our backgrounds. I think that, you know, you being an immigrant, you being an entrepreneur, I think that you're just more conservative than I am on I am. certain elements. And then I'm school teacher. So I think it's generally like our, our makeup. Yeah. doesn't mean that you're not like um, kind or it doesn't mean that you don't care about others, but you care about others through something, like through your entrepreneurship. You know, like I will provide jobs for people um, where I might be for more for like, you know, um, charity, government programs. Uh, things like that. Mm. I, we're, not, we're both fairly moderate. I would say. I just think that you're a little bit more conservative, given the fact that um, when it comes to, like taxes and things along those lines, like you see it as, let me keep more of my money so I can employ people and, and provide that for is the what people. I do. Yeah, and provide for the people that need help. I mean, we give a lot away. We donate. We tithe. We help out downtown and Skid Row. I mean, we do that kind of stuff. Not to like pat ourselves on the back, but the reality is, the more resources that we have, we the try our out. best to shouldn't say our best we try very hard help others with that we do mm -hmm. it's it weighs mm -hmm. on our conscience do you think that that's what's at the core of most political disagreements and cutting off cutting off family like i i think i really think it's so sad because it's just like a giant misunderstanding like this person like gave birth to you mm -hmm. this person was there for you when you were sick when you know you were down and out this person like sheltered yeah. you and everything and i think it's just like a giant misunderstanding and unfortunately i don't think the media is helping at all much yeah one of the things i developed from my podcast and, and stuff like that is there's like three pillars to how to have conversation i think that's what, so you're i think you're spot on about ignorance thank you um because people will be like really upset about um there's another mass shooting that just happened recently it's horrifying i really can't and, um mm -hmm. and people get really upset about um guns Gun laws yeah and i and i understand it but the vast majority of people who are calling for things like common sense gun laws and stuff like that don't know about guns. And when you have really strong opinions about things that you don't understand, mm -hmm. it's just going to become something that will have a lot of unintended consequences yeah. and stuff like that. So I developed those three pillars of intellectual humility, which is like maybe there's stuff I don't know yeah. about this. Um, a genuine curiosity. Instead of like the rhetorical question of like, how could you possibly vote for Trump? Or how right. could you possibly support right. Joe Biden? It becomes like an actual question. Like, right. bring me in. Help me understand it. And then grace. Yeah. And extending grace. And I think that's what you're saying with like your family members. Like, give some grace. Like, How could this people, person who's yeah, a really- Especially if they're like immigrants. Like, we know we have person. a friend who um, stopped talking to their parents who were like, who like hustled to come here from another country and worked really hard. And then they posted something- about like a George post. Floyd or something a like that. Post. And they cut them off for years from their, their parents. It's, it's very strange to me. Like, why not just go into curiosity? Like, wow, why do you think like that? Like you're someone who's smart. You're, I, I respect yeah, you. Yeah, you're I see someone you as that good loves person. me. Yeah, you're, mm -hmm. yeah so I why? think that's probably, I think ignorance is, is probably a lot of it. But then I think it's all three of those. I think there's not enough humility. Mm. There's not enough there's grace. Not enough humility. Ego. Yeah. Ego is the enemy. Everyone's greatest enemy, ego. Sheila, are you sometimes annoyed that Sheila is such an analytical no, I am an analytical nerd. that will is such an analytical analytical nerd yes I mean am I annoyed that anyone is anything amazing I'm also impressed by it I'm also like in awe of it that's like <laughs> that's a cliche thing right like the things that you love about the person end up becoming the thing right that like you. oh my gosh yeah. that's that's <laughs> so hot because I love humor he is so funny and then during a fight he's like he's so freaking funny or when you're pushing a baby Stop. for your Wow. Right. <laughs> so he was trying to make me laugh. Like, one of the things I loved about you was, like, when you were making, because, like, you made me laugh so easily. And then while I was, like, giving birth to Gray, you were trying to comfort me by making me laugh. And I was in labor and had labor pains. The epidural wasn't working. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's like, crap. oh, my gosh. Um, okay, so am I sometimes annoyed that Will is such an analytical nerd? Sometimes, but oh my gosh, Will, you've just gotten so much better. And I really think that's because you're getting closer to Jesus. I I don't think it's a coincidence. Like, But yeah, there are some times where you take everything I say so literally. And I'm like, I'm so bad at this. I'm so bad at language sometimes. You can take it so literally. I'm like, it's, it's adjacent to what I said. <laughs> 
And it's like, you said exactly this. And I said, no, it's adjacent to what I said. Like, please feel with the feelings of this yeah. adjective, right? So it's it's the words around it, not this exact thing. I'm so sorry. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I think naturally I'm actually a very like emotional. I'm like a pretty sensitive person. You are. And that is something that people may or may not see in you, but you are so heart led. You are so sensitive and heart led actually. Yeah. So it actually is very aligned with me. Actually. Yeah, but <laughs> yes, that's my nature. But then the like um, nurture side of it or whatever, the societal side of it was where I was raised and kind of the pathway that I went down to like social science stuff. I became a lot more analytical, a lot more objective and things. Uh, so I have that balance. But yeah, like if you say something, I take your words on face value. You're like mm -hmm. that's not what I mean. Like we've had a lot of fights where you're just like, just feel with me. <laughs> It's like, <laughs> you're probably not the only wife out there. And I'm probably not the only husband that's just like, just feel with you. What? Just give me a roadmap. Tell me what that looks like. Tell me what you mean. Because I think I am feeling with you, <laughs> but not in a way that, that seems to resonate. So that's a tricky one. Like when we miss each other in that way, I just want you to feel with me. And it's like, <laughs> all right. Is there something I can say? It's not about what you say. And don't it's listen to my words. Listen to my feeling. It's like. Yeah. Yeah. It's so simple. <laughs> so, yeah, I analyze, like, a lot. Like, I want to, like. You want it really literal. Yeah, and it's I want, really like, a stenographer, like, in court to follow no. us around all the time. That is horrible. I'm always, like, check that's the nanny like, cam. Like, yeah. That's, marriage 101. You I like know. recording conversations. I know. Stop it. I'm <laughs> well. At the core of it, though, I really am trying to understand true. and trying to get That's better. That's very true. You, the reason why you're doing it isn't because you're trying to, you know, be right. I, I believe that's no. like part of it because you're just trying to make sure you don't feel crazy. <laughs> I'm trying to improve. Trying to the same way I watch type, it's tape. True. Like I just competed in jujitsu. Like I'm watching the tape over and over again to see the mistakes that I made to try and okay. fix them. Even if I say something just like a little bit off, you should. I hope. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're trying to improve on, like, how to take that. Like, Yeah, and I think trying to, to decipher it. Like, I think trying to, and even though we've been together for a long time and we know each other very you're well. Trying to translate it. Trying to translate it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. If for that reason, sure, you can record everything. And you're a little crazy. Will, are you annoyed that Sheila needs the superficial in her life? Um, I have some less, comments on that question. Go less ahead. now. Yeah, I, it was. Again, it, it was help, help me understand it. What does that mean? Hey, that's all the time we have for today's episode of Pretty Rich Podcast, but the discussion doesn't end here. If you haven't already, hit that bell icon and click that subscribe button so you never miss out on the latest updates. And don't forget to check out part two of this episode. Remember, I'm always open to hearing your thoughts, ideas, and takeaways, so drop a comment below and let's keep the conversation going. See you next time, and thanks for watching.